The equal friction method of duct sizing, also known as constant pressure loss method, is one of the most popular methods of duct sizing in simple duct systems. The frictional pressure drop per unit length in this method is assumed to be constant throughout the system. Let us take the example of the duct system shown in the figure. Here, while sizing the ducts, the frictional pressure drop per unit length in duct A, B, C, D, E and F are assumed to be equal. In this method of duct sizing, the velocity reduces in the direction of the flow. This method is very popular due to its simplicity. In case of symmetrical duct layout having same length in each run, no dampers are required to balance the system. However, when we have asymmetrical duct systems, then the shortest run would have the minimum pressure drop and air would come out at higher pressure compared with longer runs. Also, dampers are required for balancing the pressure drop in various runs. This method is not very popular in systems with very long runs. Let us consider the duct system shown in this figure to understand the various steps in this method. In step 1, the unknown volumetric flow rates are calculated from the given flow rates. The discharge from the fan will be equal to the sum of the air supplied to the different zones due to continuity. Therefore, in this system, QAB is equal to QBE plus QCF plus QCD. So, the unknown volumetric flow rate can be calculated easily from the given equation. Now, the volumetric flow rate is equal to the product of the cross-sectional area of the duct and the flow velocity. Say we have the velocity in the main duct. Then we can easily calculate the cross-sectional area of the duct and hence its diameter. In other case, say we are provided with the cross-sectional area or the diameter of the duct. Then we can easily calculate the velocity of the flow in the main duct. In the third step, we calculate the frictional pressure drop per unit length using the empirical relationship shown here. In step 5, the data from the previous steps is compiled in a table showing the length of the duct, its flow rate, diameter of the duct, area of cross section, velocity, velocity pressure and frictional pressure drop. Now let us consider an example to understand the various steps. We have a duct system shown here and it is given that the velocity in the main duct A is 8 meter per second. We have to design a circular duct system that is the cross section of the duct is circular using equal friction method. So in the first step we will calculate the discharge from the fan which has not been provided. Now the discharge from the fan is equal to the air supply to the different zones. So Q fan is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 which comes out to be 68 cmm or 1.133 meter cube per second. In the second step we will calculate the diameter of the main duct using the velocity provided in the question. The velocity in the main duct is 8 meter per second and we know that Q fan is equal to A that is area of cross section of duct A into the flow velocity. Therefore the cross sectional area comes out to be 0 0.1417 meter square. Hence the diameter of the duct A comes out to be 0 0.4247 meter or 424.7 millimeter. Next, we need to find the frictional pressure drop per unit length. As we already know the diameter and flow rate of duct A, we can calculate the frictional pressure drop per unit length using the expression shown here, which comes out to be 0 0.2022 mm h2o per meter. 
Now, according to equal friction method, the frictional pressure drop per unit length is assumed constant throughout the duct system. Therefore, frictional pressure drop per unit length in duct A, B, C, D, E and F are equal to 0.2022 mm water per meter. Using this value of frictional pressure drop per unit length, we can calculate the other duct sizes. Since the frictional pressure drop is related to diameter and flow rate by this expression, we can modify this expression to calculate the diameter. Here the flow rate is in meter cube per second and the frictional pressure drop per unit length is in mm water per meter. Now to calculate the diameter of duct B, we need the flow rate through duct B. The air coming out of the fan is 68 cubic meter per minute, which gets divided into duct B and duct D after flowing through duct A. The air flowing into duct D is equal to 20 cubic meter per minute. So the remaining 48 cubic meter per minute flows into duct B. We can similarly calculate the flow rate through the other ducts. Therefore, the diameter of duct B comes out to be 0 0.373 meter or 373 mm. The diameter of duct C comes out to be 0 0.3052 meter or 395.2 millimeter. Diameter of duct D is equal to 0 0.2692 meter or 269.2 millimeter. For duct E, it comes out to be 0 0.2692 meter or 269.2 millimeter. Finally, for duct F, the diameter comes out to be 0 0.3052 or 395.2 millimeter. The velocity in all the ducts can be calculated using the diameters that we have already calculated. The discharge in the ducts are given by the product of the cross sectional area and the velocity. Therefore, velocity is equal to Q upon A, which comes out to be 4Q upon pi d square meter. Therefore, the velocity in the different ducts are as shown here. Before proceeding further, let us look at the application of Bernoulli's equation in air conditioning. In air conditioning, the Bernoulli's equation is written in terms of pressure of the fluid as static pressure, velocity pressure and pressure due to datum head. The sum of the static pressure, velocity pressure and pressure due to the datum head is equal to the total pressure. In the absence of datum head, the sum of the static pressure and velocity pressure is equal to the total pressure. Now, the velocity pressure PV is equal to rho C square upon 2. Rho is equal to 1.2 kg per meter cube, which is the standard density of air. Now, the expression for the velocity pressure can again be rearranged to get these expressions where PV is measured in mm H2O and velocity in meter per second and finally let us compile the data from calculations done in previous steps. Here we have the different duct sections A, B, C, D, E and F. First we have the length of the ducts followed by its flow rate in meter cube per second then the diameter of the ducts that we calculated using the equal friction method using the diameter we can calculate the area of cross section we also calculate the velocity of flow using the velocity we can calculate the velocity pressure and finally we have the frictional pressure drop in millimeter of water this is the product of the duct length and the frictional pressure drop per unit length calculated in step 3. In this case, it was 0 0.2022. So for duct A, it, it is the product of 7 and 
0.2022, which comes out to be 1.4154 millimeter water. Similarly, the frictional pressure drop has been calculated for all the ducts. Now let us suppose that in addition to the static losses, the dynamic losses are also given to us. For example, the elbow loss, branch loss, straight through section losses or also known as fitting losses and we are asked to determine the static pressure at fan exit. So in this case, the step 1 to 5 remains the same. After we have compiled the table, we can proceed to determine the dynamic losses and static pressure at the fan exit. Now before proceeding further, let us see the figure here. Now, so fan to zone 1, we have duct A and duct D. Fan to zone 2, we have duct A, B and E. Fan to zone 3, we have duct A, B, C and F. These are known as duct runs. The run with the highest pressure drop is called as the index run. The fan is selected to suit the index run with the highest pressure loss. Dampers are installed in all the duct runs to balance the total pressure loss. In this case, the index run would be fan to zone 3. The total frictional pressure drop from fan to zone 3 can be calculated from the sum of the frictional pressure drop in duct A, B, C and F. These values can be obtained from the table in step 5. The value comes out to be 4.6492 millimeter water. Now let us place the table from step 5 for easy reference. Now let us calculate the dynamic losses from fan to zone 3. First we have the loss in discharge opening that is the air supplied at zone 3 which is equal to the velocity pressure in duct F which is equal to 2.493 millimeter water. Then we have the elbow loss. We have the elbow between duct C and duct F. Therefore, the elbow loss is equal to 0.25 into velocity pressure in duct C or duct F because they have the, the same velocity of flow which comes out to be 0 0.6232 millimeter water. Then we have the fitting loss at the start of duct B due to the change in cross section from duct A to duct B. This comes out to be 0 0.159 millimeter water. Then we also have a fitting loss at the start of duct C due to the change in cross section from duct B to duct C. This comes out to be 1.1976 millimeter water. Therefore, the total dynamic loss between fan and zone 3 comes out to be 3.4728 millimeter water, which is the sum of serial number 1 to 4. Now, the total pressure at fan exit is the sum of the frictional pressure drop in the index run plus the dynamic losses in the index run. So, this comes out to be 8.122 millimeter water. The static pressure at fan exit is the difference between the total pressure and the velocity pressure in duct A which comes out to be 4.202 millimeter water. You may watch other videos on the channel by clicking on the thumbnails. Also like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Provide your feedback and suggestions in the comments below. Thank you for watching.